Hi, you're watching Life Today TV. I am here with Phil Vischer. Phil is the guy who created Veggie Tales. Now he has created a new series called What's in the Bible. Now you have gone from singing vegetables to now you're teaching kids the Septuagint. Is that right? <laughs> yes, and it's it's high time. What's in the Bible? That's your new series. What's in the Bible with Buck Denver? Um, Basically, after about 10 years of VeggieTales, I, I realized that it was a, a really great way to teach an individual Bible story, you know, kind of a, a linear retelling or, or to teach an individual value like thankfulness or kindness. But it wasn't a good format for actually explaining the entire Bible. You know, it's like the whole arc of Scripture, the story of salvation, um, or, or really abstract concepts like sanctification you know, or redemption that just was hard to do with cute talking vegetables. Uh, and what was amazing, you know, I, I've been on the show before and talked about how I lost, ended up losing VeggieTales in right. bankruptcy. Right. Um, and at first, you know, my thought was, I, well, God, how could you let that happen? You know, how could you, didn't you see how hard I was working and how much good it was doing? And what I've learned since then is that God was freeing me up to take kids deeper. Wow. You know, he was really, he was clearing my plate to say, first of all, you're working yourself to death. You know, you're making yourself miserable. Slow down and just rest in your relationship with me. Hmm. Okay, and, and it was, I just had a wonderful time of just, you know, like unwinding like a, a phone cord that's been twisted up, you know, <laughs> just letting it unwind and, and loosen up. And then I started looking around and say, say okay, God, what now? Mm -hmm. You know, is it time to get back in the game. You know, I kind of felt like a star athlete that had a horrific injury, yeah. you know, and I'm sitting on the sideline in, in my bathrobe and, and slippers. And so, you know, I realize I'm starting to look around at the world. And I realize that we have a crisis in the church right now with our kids. 65% of kids that are raised in the church in America today stop attending church as soon as they graduate from high school. Okay, we, are, we are losing a generation of kids. And part of it, you know, I think, and Chuck Colson said something amazing uh, last year in Time Magazine. He said, when we politicized the gospel in the 1980s, we made a huge mistake. He said, somehow we thought we could fix America by voting the right guys into office. He said, it's not the responsibility of the government to fix America. It's the responsibility of the church. Hmm. And he said, it's the church that's failing because we don't know our faith. 50% uh, of adult Protestants can't define the word grace. Hmm. You know, which George Gallup said was kind of central to the Protestant Reformation. Sure. You know, by grace are we saved through faith. So parents can't pass on their faith to their kids because nobody taught them, you know, in a, in a clear way. And so what I thought was, well, what if we could just go back and do like, you know, what Sesame Street did for literacy. Sesame Street was created to give kids a head start on a life of literacy. And I thought, well, we need to give kids a head start on biblical literacy, on a life of faith to know, you know, in Sunday school, they get snapshots from the Bible. It's like this week, it's Moses. Next week, it's Abraham. Right. The week after that, it's, you know, Ruth and then Jesus. But, but we don't connect the dots. We don't say, what's the point? You know, why is the book of Ruth even in the Bible? You know, what's the big picture? So what we're doing, I have a new series called What's in the Bible with Buck Denver. And Buck Denver is kind of our Ted Baxter you know, or, or Stephen Colbert. Uh, he's a, a, a puppet newsman. Good day, world. This is Buck Denver bringing you the world's most important book, the Bible. Um, where should we start? And what we're doing is walking kids through the entire story of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation in 13 DVDs and explaining all the key concepts of what is sin, what is salvation? Uh, what is redemption? You know, why are these words so important? What do they mean to your life? H how do you use uh, are these puppets or animation? Or it's a mix of, it's, it's a lot like Sesame Street. So it's a mix of puppets. I actually show up in there, you know, because sometimes there's, there's bits that are just a little too tricky for a puppet to handle. So, you know, we say it's time for tricky bits with Buck Denver. And sometimes Buck says, you know, like we were talking about um, in the book of, of Joshua, why was it okay? For the Israelites to kill all those people. Yeah. You know, my kids just ask me that question. Yeah. I mean, that's a question that is not answered in Sunday school. Not usually. Typically. No. Uh, but we go there. So we send it to Buck Denver. Tricky bits with Buck Denver. And Buck Denver says, uh-uh. You know, <laughs> I'm not handling that one. And so we change it and it says tricky bits with Phil. And then I come out and say, you know, well, 
let's talk about this. Let's talk about, you know, God's providence. Let's talk about that he created everything. He can really do whatever he wants with everything. And we establish, we give kids a defense for their faith mm -hmm. so that when they get to high school, they get to college, you know, and, and as some cynical teacher says, oh, you're a Christian. Will explain this to me. They're going to think of Bucky Denver. Yes, they're going to say, <laughs> "Well, a, a good friend of mine, a, a puppet named Buck Denver, <laughs> once told me," uh, and that's really what we're trying to do. We're giving kids a, a basic understanding of the entire Bible and the fundamentals of their faith, so that when they get to high school, when they get to college, they won't have their legs knocked out from under them by one weird question, you know, from a cynical teacher that takes their faith away. How are you dealing using you know puppets and animation and all this Sesame Street kind of stuff? How do you deal with the harder things like, like sin or judgment or hell? We're, we're trying to visualize some of this stuff in a way. Sin is a very abstract concept, mm -hmm. but the Bible talks about it in interesting ways. The Bible says, and sin entered the world, you know, and they had the stain of sin and they, you are a slave to sin. And we thought, well, what if we could visualize that in some way? So did you ever see the Star Trek episode, Trouble with Tribbles? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These little like hamster things show up on the USS Enterprise and multiply like crazy. And they're like taking over the ship. And I go, well, that's like sin. Huh. You know, sin is like Tribbles from Star Trek. So we made these little animated characters that are like little, you know, kind of dark brown fuzzballs. And when Adam and Eve sin, when they rebel against God, see, sin entered the world, entered creation. And two of these little fuzzballs drop down and attach to them. And we wow. say, now, now what was wrong with that? Well, the problem with that is that sin can't be close to God. And we show the two little fuzzballs trying to jump up toward God, and there's like a force field around them, hmm. and they just bounce off. That snake knew that, and he knew if he could get Adam and Eve, God's most precious creatures, to sin, they couldn't be close to him either. Where does this come from? I, mean, I don't know. You just, these, these things just, <laughs> this is the way you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's really weird. And, and, but it's fun then, because then we, we talk about what is God... Yeah, you know, we talk about God saving us. You need to be saved. God needs to save you. From what? Exactly. For most kids, you know, I haven't been taken captive right. by pirates. You know, I, I'm not in a sinking ship. What does God need to save me from? And, and we animate this so all of these abstract concepts become real to kids. Now, what's going to be really powerful when we get to the New Testament is we say, all right, we've been talking about redemption. We defined it. You know, is someone paying your debt for you? Uh, salvation. The Redeemer is coming. It's Jesus, and he takes the sin of the world upon himself. Now we already have a visual of all of these little, you know, right, cranky right. things all jumping onto Jesus. Wow. They leave you, they jump onto him, and they bury him. Mm. You know, and it's such a powerful visual when we get there for kids that we've set up all the way through the whole series. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. You know, like Schoolhouse Rock taught us key concepts. You know, taught a conjunction, junction, what's your function? And you know, I am a bill, I am only a bill. All these things that I never learned at school, I learned from these catchy that's, little. That's true. Yeah, these yeah. sticky little songs. Yeah. If we can do that with all the key concepts of our faith, hmm. we can raise a generation of kids you know, there's no way they'll reach adulthood and not be able to define the word grace. How do you think of yourself? I mean, are you an entertainer and an animator? Or are you what? Are you a minister to children? I mean, that's you what know, it sounds like. I've kind of wrestled with that for years. Huh. It's like, am I, wh wh what am I trying to be? You know, yeah. am I trying to be the next Walt Disney? Am I trying to be the next Billy Graham? Am I, you know, and and I'm not really sure. I, I'm trying to be Phil is finally what I came down to, and I'm letting God reveal that to me over time. Uh, because where I get into trouble is where I decide who I am. You know, for about 10 years, I decided I was the next Walt Disney. And so I wanted an animation studio, and I wanted to build a theme park someday, and I wanted, and I wanted. And the more I want, the less I hear what God wants for me. Hmm. You know, and so through the bankruptcy of Big Idea and losing all that, the big lesson was, be Phil, and let me reveal that to you. So, but I love teaching things to kids, you know, not just telling jokes, but saying, okay, uh, progressive sanctification. Could you explain that to a four-year-old? Yeah, no. Sure, why not? <laughs> well, maybe you could. <laughs> may, that's great. That, are you more at peace now than you were? Oh, holy cow. I'm so much more at peace. The, the thing that, that really showed me I was on the wrong track was sitting in bed one night next to my wife reading the fruit of the Spirit. There's peace joy, love, patience, kindness, you know, long suffering. And I, I turned to my wife and said, if this is what is supposed to be coming out of you when you're a Christian, 
I don't think I'm a Christian because mm. I'm anxious. I'm stressed about my work. I'm worried that I'm not doing enough for God fast enough. You know, and, and none of those things are on the list. Mm. You know, and so I started reading really about Paul saying, okay, Paul, you know, he wrote the book of Philippians. It's, it's the book of joy. You know, he says joy or rejoice like 20 times in this short little book. Rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, where was he when he wrote the book? He was in prison. Okay, why was he rejoicing in prison? You know, and, and I found the clue in the verse that says, I, I struggle using all his power that works so mightily through me. And I realized, wait a minute, he's struggling, but not with his own power. Mm. He's struggling with Christ's power. Mm. So letting go, you know, saying, I have no power to do anything good. Mm. I cannot be Walt Disney. I cannot change the world. I can barely get myself out of bed, you know, some mornings. But Christ has the power you know, for me to do whatever he wants me to do. And so now it's about listening to him yeah. and saying, so what do you want me to do? You know, and, and the stress goes away. Because whether I reach 10 kids next week or a million kids, that's not my business. That's God's business. My business is what story did he ask me to tell and did I tell it? Wow. Look forward to seeing more of your stories in the yeah. series What's in the Bible. Thank you for being with us here. On Life You're Today. welcome. Thanks for having me.